Hello everyone, so today I am here to do my July wrap up. So the month of July was a much better reading month than the month of June, which is awesome. Um, I read a total of nine novels this month, which is pretty good, but that is also including a couple of absolutely massive books. So this is the first month I'm actually also going to be talking about page count, um, just because yes, nine books is a lot, but it's also, I'm just seriously impressed with how many big books that I read this month. Um, but yes, this month was Booktubeathon, so I got quite a few books read at the very end of the month. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to tell you guys what I read this month. The first book that I read this month was Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare, which I don't have my book of because my mom is currently reading it. Um, but this book was 698 pages, so it was a pretty chunky book. Um, but I finally caved and I read Lady Midnight because I read the Mortal Instruments series and the Infernal Devices back when I was in middle school, early high school-ish, um, and I always have a nostalgia for it. Like, I don't think I loved it nearly as much as other people do, but I definitely have a nostalgia for that series, and I heard that Lady Midnight and Lord of Shadows definitely took it to a more, like, mature level, which I definitely agree with. I would actually probably say that Lady Midnight was probably one of my favorite Cassandra Clare books. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I really liked the characters, I really liked the plot, I really liked where it was going and everything, and I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars, which was pretty high for me. I was not expecting it to give it that high of a rating, uh, but yeah, Lady Midnight, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I really highly recommend reading it if you did like the Mortal Instruments series. I'm not gonna lie, if you haven't read the Mortal Instruments and the Infernal Devices and you don't plan on it, like, it's not worth it to read all those books to get to Lady Midnight, but if you have already read them and you're like, oh, do I, do I continue? I would recommend at least giving Lady Midnight a shot. I really enjoyed it. It was good. The next book that I finished this month was Colorless Sakura Tazaki and His Years of Pilgrimage by Haruki Murakami. This was my last Murakami novel that I needed to read, which was so emotional. I was honestly, like, I just kept putting it off because I didn't want to be done kind of thing, but I have a full spoiler free and a spoiler discussion review that I will link down below. I give this a 4 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed this book. I think this was a perfect blend of Murakami. Um, my mouse is making noises, but I thought this was a perfect blend of Murakami's weird magical realism mixed with his contemporary novels. So again, I really enjoyed this. I will be talking, I have a full review for it, and I will also be talking about it in, I'm going to be remaking my Murakami video because, oh my god, I'm so sick of the comments that I get on that video, like Jesus Christ. So I will be remaking that video and I'll be talking about this one in there. The next book that I read this month was Tiger Lily by Jody a Lynn Anderson, and this was a Peter Pan retelling. Um, if Peter Pan had fallen in love with Tiger Lily, who is the Native American girl on the island of Neverland, rather than Wendy. I ended up really enjoying this uh, retelling. It was definitely a little bit romantic for my taste. Uh, like, Peter was definitely like an actually valid love interest, which I always think is kind of strange, but I really loved the character of Tiger Lily and TikTok, and I just really enjoyed the dynamics that um, Anderson showed in this book, and I really, really enjoyed it. This is a really quick little novel. It's only like two, like less than 300 pages, but I just flew through it one day, and I really, really enjoyed it. The writing is very good, very simple, and I also really like how this book is told from a bystander's point of view. It is told from Tinkerbell's point of view, um, and she isn't like best friends with Peter or anything like that. She's just a fairy on the island and she tells the story of Peter and Tiger Lily and I really enjoyed it. I but I give it a 4 out of 5 stars if I didn't say that. <laughs> the fourth book I finished this month was Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare, um, which is the sequel to Lady Midnight and I'm not gonna lie, Everyone was like, this is the best sequel ever, it was so much better than Lady Midnight, da 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 I did not like this one at all. Uh, well, no, I liked, I liked like 250, 300 pages of this book, but like, I thought Lady Midnight felt pretty long, um, but this one was, like, I just didn't particularly like, like, the majority of it. Um, this book, um, I'm not gonna talk too much about, like, plot details, because, like, like I said, I liked like 300 pages of this book, um, and most people know who have read this what those 300 pages are, and then like the ending I just was not impressed with. I really didn't care that much at the ending, which everyone's like, the ending like ripped me apart, and I was like, I don't care at all, whoops. But um, writing style wise actually pissed me off so much. This book, it's like each chapter would 
be like three pages of, you know, Ty and Kit and Lizzie and stuff like that, or Livy or whatever her name was, and then like three pages of Julian and Emma, and then like three pages of other people. And I'm like, stop skipping around so much. Like, it kept pulling me out of the story with how much she was skipping around, and Lady Midnight did not do that. Um, so this was just like, it was really awkwardly paced because of that. Um, and again, I wasn't impressed with the ending at all. Like, everyone's like, oh my god, we have to wait two years for the next book. I'm fine with waiting. Like, I really don't care that much. Um, because the ending didn't impress me at all. I thought it was like, like, she just needed a big bad of this book. And it didn't work for me at all. I also really didn't like Julian and Emma, who are like the main characters of this book. Um, I thought their storyline was really boring. Um, so I only gave this like a three star because I did really enjoy the first 300 pages or so, um, and I also love Mark and what's his name? Kieran. I love Mark and Kieran. They're my children. And the next book I read was the book I finished right before the book Tubathon started, and that is The Child Thief by Brahm. This book, ugh. I was so excited to read this book, and I'm very happy to say it did not let me down. This book is just an absolutely epic Peter Pan retelling. It's got, I've showed this a couple times, it's got full page illustrations on the inside, uh, color illustrations in the middle, and then at the beginning of each chapter it has other illustrations done by Brom. This was a crazy Peter Pan retelling. So this book kind of is about um, Peter Pan, who is the child thief because he goes into the real world and steals children and basically kind of like manipulates them until they agree to come with him. And then he basically makes them into warriors for the war that is happening in Neverland. Um, and yeah, Neverland is completely gone to shit and there are these people called the Flesh Eaters and these other people and all of this stuff. Peter has a really interesting backstory. It was such an amazing book. If you are even slightly interested in Peter Pan, I really highly recommend this one. It was so good. Um, I gave it a... I think I like officially gave it like a 4 out of... 4.5 out of 5 stars. Um, just because I couldn't give it the full 5 because the writing wasn't very good. I'm not gonna lie, that was the only thing that really put me off of this book was the writing was not good. Like, it felt very juvenile, like, it just, it, I don't know how to explain it, like, it, like, okay, like, on this page, see how, like, when they're yelling, it's actually in all caps and stuff? Like, I feel like authors don't do that. Like, I feel like when you're a little kid and you're writing, you'll do that, like, write in all caps to show someone's yelling, but, like, most authors don't do that anymore unless they're really making a statement. But his, it was, like, every freaking conversation was in all caps because they're all screaming at each other. Um, so, and also just a lot of the descriptions felt very mediocre, I guess. Um, uh, I don't really think Brom is actually a writer. I'm pretty sure he's more of an illustrator, so I can't I don't really know, but um, I wasn't the biggest fan of the writing, I'm not gonna lie, but the characters, the plot, all of the other things about this book that I love definitely overshadowed it, so 4.5 out of 5 stars. And this was another big one, this one's almost like 500 pages, and it's like big, so. And next up are the books that I read for the book Tubathon. Um, again, I will leave down below my vlog um, and the little wrap up that I did, but I didn't really talk about any of them. But I finished four books during the readathon that I'm going to tell you about now. So I finally finished The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Yeah, unfortunately, I ended up not liking this book that much. So the story is that this book is my most recommended book ever. Like, I get recommended on BookTube, on Twitter, on good reads all the time. Like, everyone's like, Kate, you're gonna love this book because it is a gay Iliad retelling of uh, Achilles and Patroclus, Patroclus, who is like his kind of partner. Yeah, I just, I didn't end up liking it that much. I had it pitched to me as like similar to like Captive Prince or something like that, which I really enjoyed. And obviously I really like, I really like LGBT books, but I don't necessarily love like contemporary LGBT books. So like, a epic kind of fantastic LGBT book I was really pumped for and I ended up not liking it that much. I gave it a 2.5 out of 5 stars. I did not like the writing of this book. If someone else had written it maybe it would have been better. I hated the writing. I thought it was so boring and so flowery and I don't know if this is YA cons like considered YA but it was so painfully YA with the sex scenes. Oh my god. Like 
I was about to like throw up from the description of a girl's genitals like oh my god please like just call it a vagina I would prefer that over like oh I just it was compared to a flower I don't know I was not I was not having that and just like I've always been like just don't write it or write it like an adult because like don't make sex in YA books because it doesn't work so uh yeah that was disgusting disgusting to read and um, I didn't care about the characters. I didn't care about much of anything. Uh, I hated the ending uh, with uh, Achilles' son. I that w oh, I hated it so much. Um, the very very end was like kind of cute but like for the most part I just didn't care about anything that was happening in this book. So 2.5 out of 5 stars. The next book that I finished was The Impossible Fairy Tale by Han Yu Ju, which is a Korean novel translated into English by Jeanette Hong. Um, this book I don't even know how to describe it. I don't I don't really understand what this book was trying to do. Maybe I'm too stupid, like I don't know. But um in part one of this book we're following a elementary school class and they have these journals that they write in for like an assignment and there's this character called the child and she goes into her peers journals and writes really weird things and the teacher and principal are like we need to find out who wrote these because this is not appropriate and then it's like this big investigation and then like there's a lot of murder and I was just like so confused but I also like could follow that there was a plot happening and then part two happened I literally have no idea what the hell was happening in part two I think it was about like an author who had written part one but like the author had written it for a real person who was the child I have no idea it started going into second person I had no I had no idea what was happening by the end and like I literally I I have I can't tell you what happened. Um so I give this a 2 out of 5 star. It was not good. And the next book that I finished was my favorite one that I read during the Booktubeathon and that is I believe in a thing called Love by Maureen Goo. This was so cute. Oh my gosh, I don't even like contemporary that much, but this was so freaking cute. I really highly recommend this, especially for people who like K-dramas. Um, honestly, even if you don't like K-dramas, I think you guys could really appreciate this. My favorite thing about this book was the fact that it makes fun of K-dramas a little bit, but it also just totally makes fun of YA contemporaries. It was very, like, self-aware kind of thing. Uh, basically, this is about a girl named Desi who has never been able to do love. She is an expert at everything else. She's valedictorian. She's the president of a million club. She's perfect. But she has never been able to have a boyfriend because she always screws it up. And then she starts watching her father's uh, K-dramas with him and she realizes that there is a kind of pattern to these K-dramas and she writes down all of the different steps. And honestly, if you like K-dramas, you will die at the list. It is so funny, mostly because it is so accurate. Like, oh, uh, like, okay, step 10 is find out the guy's big secret, preferably through excruciatingly repetitive flashbacks. Yes, ex yes. You are the living embodiment of all that is pure and good, because when is a k-drama protagonist ever bad? Step 20, you're not allowed to be happy until the very last possible minute because of course and it's just so funny like take drastic measures to make sure you have your happy ending like this book is gold like it is so funny i was literally laughing out loud i was sending like snapchats of paragraphs like circled um she literally like quotes k dramas that she's watched like actual ones like they talk about it's okay that's love in this book the descendants of the sun stuff like that um it just it's gold it is so funny it is so cute i adored all of the characters i adore i actually really liked the love interest for once he was a little cliche with the like mysterious bad boy artsy like kind of thing but i thought it was really really cute desi was an amazing main character and this really did feel like reading a k-drama so i really highly recommend this one i could not recommend it enough i would say this is my favorite contemporary novel i have ever read and i give it a four out of five stars but i will 
I honestly might bump it up to five. I'm not gonna lie. And the last book that I read this month was Roomies by Sarah Zar and Tara Altabrand. Um, I had this pitched to me as like a really great book to read when you're a freshman going into college, but um, I am going into my sophomore year. But I still thought it was really, really cute. This follows a two girls who are put together as roommates at college for their freshman year, and they start talking over the summer through email, and basically it follows both of their lives dramas as they also become friends. I give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars because I really like the main characters. I actually quite like the writing. I could relate to this book so much. This book is so relatable. Um, I mean, even actually, I keep saying, one of the main girls has my exact breakup story and it's really, really funny. And it was just a lot of fun. Um, but I must say, this was nothing like horribly special. And also the side characters, I literally, like, going between the two girls, they didn't exactly have, like, the most unique voices. Like, I kept kind of getting them screwed up. And the side characters, there were so many characters. I could not keep them straight for the life of me. Um, so I got very confused on what characters went with, with girl. But other than that, the main story and, like, all of the different little things that happened with them were really, really cute and really, really fun. So I definitely recommend this if you are a person going into your freshman year of college. Um, I think this would be a great book to read the summer before college. So those are the nine books that I read this month. Woo! But if you guys wanted to know, um, with these nine books, I read 3,700 pages, which I think is insane. Insane. like oh my gosh like uh that's a lot of pages um but anyways i hope you guys all enjoyed this wrap up um definitely tell me down below if you have read any of these books or if you're planning on it and i love you all and i'll see y'all soon bye